Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to talk about day 13 in the heads up match between Doug Polk and Daniel Negreanu. So through the first 12 days we were sitting at Doug being up $596,000 through the course of 5,751 hands. So in today's video we're going to review four hands from day 13 and these were the four hands that were all in in calls by the river. So our first hand here is we're going to see Doug raise with queen jack offsuit on the button. Daniel puts in the three bet from the big blind at the ace of kings suited and Doug calls. Uh, Pre-flop, I think Doug has a decision here with the queen jack. He can either four bet, um, basically turning into a bluff, or he can flat call. Um, I think I would probably be doing a mix of the two strategies, so I think doing either is okay here. And the flop comes down king, queen, two, two hearts. So good flop for Daniel here as he does a bet and Doug calls. Pretty standard here on the flop. Uh, Daniel having top pair, top kicker, Doug hitting his middle pair. And we go to a turn card, which is the seven of diamonds. So Daniel picks up the nut flush draw to go along with his top pair, top kicker. Now he bets 75% pot and Doug calls again. I think a pretty standard call from Doug here with second pair. There's still some draws that Daniel can have. He can have jack 10, he can have a heart draw, he can have the backdoor diamond draw that picked up. So definitely don't think you can be folding second pair here. And on the river is the five of spades. And Daniel jams all in here and Doug calls. So Daniel wins a good size pot here. So pretty standard line from Daniel here. I don't think anything too crazy to talk about. Doug's call is interesting uh, with the queen jack here. So obviously it is like a bluff catcher. Uh, as far as is this a good call for Doug? So what are the types of hands we want Daniel to have? We want him to have some jack 10 in his range, uh, some jack nine suited. And we want him to have, you know, ace 10 that maybe decided to barrel off here. And we want him to have missed hearts. So Doug does block jack 10 and jack 9 that we don't necessarily want to have here. Um, he doesn't have a heart, though. He has one diamond. So I think this spot's really close. I think I slightly prefer a fold, um, but I don't think it, a call here is terrible either. Next, we'll jump into our second hand here to review. We have Doug had opened up the button here with threes. Daniel in the big blind puts in the three bet with the ace jack offsuit. Doug calls on the button. Pre flop, pretty standard here. And we just see a massive flop for both players here. As we see Daniel flopping top pair, top kicker, and Doug flopping bottom set. So Daniel goes ahead and bets here, and Doug makes what I would think is a pretty standard call here. Again, kind of similar to a hand we talked about in the last video. I don't see a reason on this board necessarily to be raising. If this was jack 10 at three with a, a flush draw, I think we'd consider raising because there's a lot of draws that Doug could be representing. Uh, but in this situation, I do like just calling the three here. Uh, turn is the six of hearts, bringing a backdoor heart draw. Daniel bets again for value, and at this point, Doug does put in the raise. Uh, this is interesting. I think I slightly prefer just calling again in Doug's spot. Um, I would be interested to know, you know, is he always raising here with his set? Is he mixing it in sometimes? So the reason that I say I prefer a call here is we can keep some of Daniel's bluffs in. Also, we could have, you know, not scare off some of the hands that he has. And there's only slightly over pot behind. Uh, with that said, you know, Doug, as long as in his range he has some combo draws that he's raising here to willing to go off with. So like, let's say he has a king queen that decided not to four bet preflop or he has queen nine of hearts. Um, something like that or, or like a gut shot. So he has like queen eight of hearts. Uh, so he has like a straight draw and a flush draw. If he's willing to raise those hands, I think it's okay. We just want to make sure that he's balanced here between his raises and his uh, semi bluffs. Um, after Doug does this, Daniel does decide to jam it in, which I agree with here. There's so much money in the pot. There's a few bad river cards here for Daniel. Um, a nine, a king, a queen. Like those aren't the greatest. There's the backdoor hearts. Um, so I think it is with the stack to pot ratio here. I don't think Doug has many raise folds on the turn here, which is why I was kind of talking about. I'm not sure if I love raising the turn. Um, but Daniel does jam in at the ace jack and with everything I said about not loving Doug's raise on the turn here, he does get to stack a hand like ace jack here. And whereas like, again, kind of like I said, if a king or queen comes, it could scare the action. So, and the heart is, or the river is another heart, a jack, but it's not gonna be good enough for Daniel is Doug does hit a full house. Next here in our third hand to review, we have Doug opening up the button with a 10-8 of clubs and Daniel puts in the three bet from the big blind here at the 8-7 offsuit. Doug calls. Uh, I think 8-7 there, I'm guessing this is a frequency raise from Daniel. I would imagine he's not always four betting his hand sometimes, or always three betting, sorry. Maybe sometimes he's just calling. Uh, when he does three bet, I think Doug has a pretty standard call. So I like the preflop call from Doug preflop. And the flop comes 10, 9, 8. So Daniel flops the low end of the straight here. 
on a really wet and connected board. And he decides to bet out, and Doug makes the call. Uh, pretty standard in both spots. Definitely like betting here with Daniel's hand on a wet and connected board with a really strong hand. Doug flops a middle pair and the open end straight draw. The low end of it, but an open end straight draw. So definitely at least want to be seeing the turn card here. Turn is the six of clubs, so it doesn't bring in the draws. Daniel bets and Doug calls. So again, you know, if you're in Doug's spot, you don't necessarily love your hand here as you have just the middle pair and the low end of the open ended straight draw. But I think you still do need to call here. And the river is a nine, which is a really interesting card here as it pairs the board. And it's just, you know, how thin can Daniel be going for value here? So when he bets all in, Doug does end up making the call. So what are the hands that Doug is potentially putting on Negroni that could be bluffs here? Um, so he can have a heart draw. He can have a king uh, that missed the open-ended straight draw that's now repping the nines. I think Daniel can also be going for value here with hands like aces, kings, and queens. Uh, Obviously, he doesn't necessarily love the nine, but with all those missed draws, I think if he Daniel had aces, kings, or queens here, you'd have to jam for value with those hands. And uh, so as far as Doug's hand, what do we not want to have if we're going to make a call? So we don't want to have a king because we want Daniel to have the missed open-ended straight draw on the high end. We don't want to have a heart because if we have a heart, that means it's less likely Daniel's bluffing with a missed flush draw. So... 10-8 looks like a really thin call here, but it's actually a, a good hand for Doug to have. The only thing that could be slightly better is if he had like a really weak 10, like maybe even 10-7, just because then Daniel would have some more 8s in his range for the bluff. Um, but if Doug's going to make a light call down, I do think 10 is a good candidate to do it with. And uh, he does make the call, and unfortunately for him, Daniel does win a nice size pot with his flop straight. And now going to our final hand to recap here. It's going to be our fourth hand. It's actually going to be in the last hand of the session. So Doug opens up the button with a seven suited. Daniel three bets with the jack nine suited. Doug calls. Uh, I think you can either flat or three bet the jack nine suited. I prefer three betting like Daniel did. And Doug's situation, I mean, you could four bet sometimes with the suited ace, but I prefer calling as well. So I like the way both players play this preflop. And the flop comes down at nine, six, two, two spades. Daniel goes ahead and bets three quarters pot here. And Doug makes the call. So Daniel betting top pair here and Doug floating with the ace high, backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. I definitely like his call here on the flop. Turn is the four of diamonds. So this brings the nut flush draw for Doug. And Daniel bets three quarters. So it's a pretty tough spot here for Doug as he's calling about a third of his remaining stack. So we have to think about what hand, like what cards on the river we think make Doug the best hand. So obviously if it's a diamond, he's gonna feel good. Even if it's a nine to six of diamonds that pairs the board, heads up, you're happy to go with the nut flush here when the stack to pot ratio is getting this small. Um, also, I would imagine most of the time if Doug hits an ace, it's good, um, as you don't necessarily expect Daniel to be just bluffing two straight streets here with an ace high, unless maybe potentially it's the ace high flush draw on the flop with the ace of spades. And obviously we know Daniel can't have the backdoor um, ace high flush draws, that's what Doug has. So he does decide to call, and the river is the ace of clubs. So Daniel checks here. And then after that, we see Doug jam all in for value and Daniel tanks for a while and calls. So really interesting river situation here. I do like the check from Daniel with the nine. And uh, when he does this, it definitely he's representing some sort of value is uh, a lot of times if he's just bluffing here, the ace is gonna be a good bluff card for him. And uh, I think it's really good that he does just check here. And I think it's also a good call. So when Doug jams here, we know Doug's capable of bluffing. So what are the hands that Doug could be bluffing with? He can be bluffing with seven, eight for the missed open-ended straight draw. He could be bluffing with miss spades. So, and he could also be bluffing with the missed diamond. So if you guys will notice with Daniel's hand, he doesn't block any of those. So he doesn't have a seven, he doesn't have an eight, he doesn't have a diamond, he doesn't have a spade. So realistically, this is one of Daniel's best calls. And he also blocks like a set of nines, which I mean, is probably four betting at some frequency, but he also blocks like a nine, six. So he blocks some two pair there. And uh, it's honestly in an odd way, it's probably a better hand for Daniel to have than pocket queens here. Um, just because we know Doug's not gonna be value jamming here, most likely with tens, jacks. Um, also those hands would be four betting at some frequency pre-flop. And again, with the jack nine, we're blocking some two pairs that Doug could have. So I think this is actually a really good call from Daniel. Like I said, just all the re blocker removals, he doesn't block any of the hands we want Doug to be bluffing with. So unfortunately for him though, Doug did hit the ace and he wins the last hand of the session.
So after that hand, uh, Daniel did end the session up $18,000 over the course of 476 hands. Uh, although Daniel was the winner, it wasn't necessarily the greatest end to the session as he was at one point up about three to four buy-ins on the day, which, you know, he was really looking for a bounce back session after the big losing session in session number 12. And, uh, uh, the next match will be on Wednesday, December 2nd at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe I'll be putting out a video for that session. My next video on the challenge, I plan on releasing this upcoming Saturday morning. It'll be on the Friday session. Um, so if you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well as turn on notifications. It helps you stay connected to the channel and let you know when I'm releasing new videos both on the challenge and on my own play, as well as it helps support the channel, helps it grow, so I'd really appreciate it. So until next time, guys, we're gonna go ahead and sign off and I hope you guys have a good day.